traditions. They, he's not following the church traditions, and so he confront, confronts them about the difference between cleanliness and faith. And then as you uh, get into chapter 15, there's a story about a woman who illustrates in living color what Jesus is talking about. Here's a woman who's outside the religious traditions. She doesn't live in Israel. She's not Jewish, and yet she has faith, and that's what binds her to this relationship with Jesus. Um, in uh, chapter 16, um, as you read that, maybe take some comfort in the fact that the disciples don't always get what's going on. Uh, you may be wrestling with reading and thinking, oh man, I don't understand that, I don't get that. Take great comfort in that these disciples who spent night and day with Jesus um, did not always understand what was going on. So as you read 16, um, kind of think that through as well. And then uh, he... Uh, uh, Peter's confession is really the thing you need to take out of this, that while Peter didn't understand all the details, he did get that right, that Jesus is the Christ. Um, and you can kind of understand as you move into chapter 17 why they would be so confused. One minute, uh, Jesus is uh, just shattering everything they know to be true about the coming king by saying he's going to go to die. Uh, they're saying, look, the, the, the one that God would send would be powerful and lead and and would not die in their minds, but Jesus is telling them something different. And then the next section in chapter 17 is Jesus being glorified on the Mount of Transfiguration, and they get to see him in his glory, and you can understand why these disciples would be so confused as to who Jesus was and why he was really here. Um, moments he's doing amazing miracles, the next moment he's teaching them about struggle and strife, uh, and then he's glorified, and then he talks about dying on a cross. Uh, and so you can see why he would be uh, confusing to these disciples. Uh, in chapter 18, the whole chapter is really about restoring the lost. There's going to be some conversation about what we should do if someone sins against us. Uh, but the idea of that is not punishment, not judgment, not revenge. The idea is reconciliation, restoring a broken and lost relationship. And then the parable of the lost sheep is sort of uh, Jesus' way of uh, explaining uh, this whole idea of restoring the lost and, and reconciliation. Uh, and then there's the parable of the unmerciful servant uh, where Jesus uh, really takes what we have received from God and, and tries to make it apply to the way in which we treat others, the graciousness that we show to other people. Uh, in chapter 19, uh, again, some very challenging teachings of Jesus. Uh, one of those challenging teachings is on divorce, where he, um, he actually goes further than the Old Testament uh, does on divorce. And uh, he, he kind of gives us the idea that the only reason that they're in Jewish society in his day allowed to divorce is because Moses, through God, uh, gave them this out because of the hardness of their hearts. So he, he talks a little bit about that. Then we get to a very interesting uh, uh, question about uh, this rich young ruler. And as you read this rich young ruler, he wants to be saved and he wants to figure out how to be saved. Uh, but he doesn't like Jesus' answer, which is shocking to the disciples. They could not understand how a rich man would not make it to heaven. He had time to tithe. He had time to fast. He had time to go to the temple to pray. Uh, he was able to follow all the rules. And if he couldn't get into heaven, they're, they're just sure that there's no way that they can. And so Jesus' answer to that is very interesting as well. He starts out chapter 20 with a very gracious parable uh, about uh, workers in the kingdom and how God is gracious to those who even come late. Uh, and so that's a, that's a great parable. Uh, in chapter um, in chapter 21, we see Jesus in Jerusalem for the last time. We're heading into Holy Week. That last week, Palm Sunday, is what we're reading in chapter 21. He goes into the temple. He, uh, uh, he clears out the temple and uh, is uh, upset that the place where people should be able to go for hope and, and uh, peace and strength and grace has been turned into a place where they are charged uh, to do certain religious acts. Uh, and so uh, it, has, it has gone from a place of prayer to a place of profit, and uh, he's very upset about that as well. You'll notice throughout much of the reading uh, this week that there's a lot of conflict. I don't think we usually think about Jesus in conflict, 
but there's a lot of conflict as he is involved with the religious leaders and the religious traditions. He doesn't ever have a conflict with Matthew and the sinners, uh, except that he calls them out of their lifestyle. But he, he has these huge conflicts with uh, the religious leaders. So as you read this week, um, just kind of keep your eye open for that conflict and uh, how Jesus is, is always trying to call people uh, to understand who he is. Uh, enjoy your week of reading.